I want now to go back over that last section we just did, verses 19 to 21, uh, from another point of view. Uh, because it is a summary of part of this letter. You see, this is the link between God's work on this world and ours. And the link is love. You can see then that love is not a feeling. Love is much deeper. This is why we pray, my friends, so that we are in touch with God and God can guide us. Right now, uh, here in the United States, the greatest need is for people to have an experiential faith and be credible. Because if I really know Jesus, and I do by his mercy, then if I talk about him, I'm not presenting a mathematical theory. I'm talking about somebody I know and love. And that makes a difference. So, as we face the difficulties which the Catholic Church will be facing, uh, and is already facing, the most important thing we can give to this world is a living knowledge of Jesus Christ and who he is. That's the most important thing we can do. And that's why the text says, you see, uh, in this section, we love because he first loved us. That is so amazing. But when it happens, I'm thinking of a friend who's dead now. What a, what a great lay apostle. Founder of the Legion of Mary in France when the, under German occupation in World War II. We're holding any meeting that was not approved by the occupation forces was punishable by death. And she founded of the Legion of Mary all over France crawling on her stomach in the dark because if anybody had found out about those meetings and reported them they all would have been killed so as you see that's love how it started in her she was doing her graduate work in economics in, in, in London I was doing this work in London going to be an economist. She was standing on the street corner in London and God just said to her from nowhere, I love you. Changed her whole life. She stopped her studies right then and there, went back to Dublin uh, and joined the Legion of Mary. And it wasn't long before Frank Duff saw the quality of person who has just given her life to the Lord and knew that he loved her. And she became one of the primary apostles of the Legion of Mary. And as I say, uh, was the one who founded all these presidia in France when every non-approved meeting was punishable by death. Now how did you go from being studying to be an economic theorist to calling on your stomach in the street to uh, found meetings that are forbidden by death. How do you get from one to the other? God says to you, I love you. That's how. Well, he never said that to me. You don't know. Have you been listening? He doesn't start. I love you, he might start with stop drinking so much. You know? Be better to your wife. Get that pornography off your screen. He might start there and bring you to the point that when he says I love you, it really impacts your heart. It isn't, oh yeah, that's, oh, I'm really glad to know that. 
It changes you totally. When the Father shows his face to you and you see for yourself who he is, nothing can obliterate that from your memory. Nothing. It's always there. You see, that God the Father is so loving, so true, so reliable. There's not the slightest tinge of unreliability, of falsehood in him. He's true. And when he shows his face to you, you're like, now you know how steady God is. Now you know who you have to be. You have got to be able to mediate that kind of steadiness. Well, how do you do it? Number one, forgive your enemies. God does that. You want to imitate God, you got to do that. Paul says, the imitators of God and walk in love as very dear children. Well, then you got to forgive all your enemies. First in your heart, and then find a way. Ask the Holy Spirit. Ask Our Lady to show you, how do I patch this up? Joe, what do you say you and I have lunch together today? When you get there, Joe, I want to apologize for the way I've related to you. It's wrong. And I'd like to see whether we couldn't kind of rebuild that friendship again, or that relationship again. Do something. Does God take the initiative? God became man. God walked these, this earth teaching us, praying for us, healing us. Finally, he acted an act of love. He died for us. He's already taken the initiative. Love is initiative. It's not just reciprocation. Now, we don't take the initiative with God because we only move when God moves us. But he can be moving us to take the initiative in relationships and not just enmity. You know, you know somebody who's lonely and sick, call them up. You know, get out of our little world and act like God. Doesn't Paul say, you know, Walk in love as very dear children, imitating God. So that's what this text is telling us, you see. We love because he first loved us. Now, if someone says, I love God and hates his brother, he's a liar. It's impossible. Well, it's not just hating can be ignoring. Do you care? Do you care about the world? Do you care about the people you work with? Do you at least say a Hail Mary for them in the day? What are you doing? Do you have, do you share the Father's preoccupation for the salvation of every single person on this globe? Do you have that kind of if you do, you know what to say, you know what to do. It's not like, you know, you have to bring them from zero to a hundred miles an hour in ten seconds. You, know. you just do your part. Let them catch a glimpse of love, of care, of kindness, of humor. Just catch a glimpse. The next person will give them another glimpse. Uh... I know somebody was just telling me they drove into a section of town. It was Part of this is a race thing. They went into to a section of town, very African-American, and evidently has a reputation of being a very tough place. This was a white woman, and she drove in there because she was lost and needed... Uh, you know, so she was a little bit frightened. She got out of the car... And all these guys said, you know, man, you really frightened us. And she said, I frightened you. I'm frightened. They said, you don't understand. There's no white person ever comes down here 
unless they want to arrest us. It's the only reason they come. And here you are, asking directions and being nice to us. And uh, you see how Jesus used that? And she continued to be nice, and it worked, it worked out great. And that's a touch. In fact, one of those men helped her find her way through the city over to, uh, in here in Washington, over to the National Shrine, where she had to go. And he said, there it is right there. And she said, oh, come in. He came in, and he saw the statue of Our Lady. And he was mesmerized. Who is that? And he just stood there looking at her. Our Lady was doing something in his heart. And this woman, having brought him there, you know, and he was so happy to be helping this nice lady. And uh, he himself, she told me the story, you know, he's about 6'4", six, 6'5", six, weighs 260. I mean, he was a big fella. He saw that statue, and the Lord just mesmerized him to look at Mary. So he looked at Mary. Now what passed between them, nobody knows. But that man was touched. And that was God's plan for his that man this day. And so she was God's instrument. You see? Simple, isn't it? That she was kind to him and she was grateful to him. And he went out of his environment where he's safe into the big white world and uh, to help her. Now that's Jesus. Whatever the Lord did between himself and Our Lady, nobody knows. But the Lord had a plan for him that day. And that's what happened. It's that simple, my friends. You see, the one who does not love his brother whom he has seen, God whom he has not seen, he cannot love. If this woman had said, oh, I'm just crazy about God and didn't listen to her heart saying, just be friendly with this man. You see? I don't say start there. This is a person who's used to talking to people and telling them about God. This was a more dramatic one than most of the time. Start small. Just uh, when you're paying your bill at the grocery store, God bless you. That's enough. And so, uh, and this commandment we have from him, that the one who loves God should also love his brother and sister. Not just somebody miles away that you meet once, the people in your house, in your neighborhood, in your family. You see, that's the commandment we have, that we should do that. And so you see, that section ends with that uh, notion. It started with, uh, in this we know we abide in him and he in us, because he has given us of his spirit. If he gives us of his spirit, then he, the spirit moves us to love and to be friendly and to be forgiving. Look in your heart if there's anyone for whom you have any rancor right now, pray. Pray for that person right now.